Eritropolis idea in Hamilton starts to take root in the early part of the last decade, around 2001-2002. The newspaper started to talk a bit about it, and economic development people started talking about it. The idea of having a new economic engine for Hamilton to replace whatever we've lost in the past. The concept comes from a man named John Casarda, professor at the Keenan Institute of Free Enterprise in North Carolina. He's a guru on this. He's going around the world basically saying the future lies in airports. You need to build your cities around airports. Airports are going to be the thing that drives your future economic development. And that got taken up in Hamilton because we have an airport. The idea was kicked around for two or three years, then listed as the number one economic development priority for Hamilton. It got some public attention and some public reaction. It sort of went underground a bit, then got passed as an urban boundary expansion by the Deany government in 2005 to a lot of public opposition. That got blocked by the Ontario Municipal Board. It got appealed, and the Ontario Municipal Board said, you can't just come charging in here and, and do this. You've got to back up and go through a whole process of explaining why you need to do this, uh, justify it, and so on. In that same period, the provincial government uh, was introducing new planning rules to try and control urban sprawl and to try and control specifically urban boundary expansions. Uh, those included a rewrite of the provincial policy statement and making it mandatory, and also the Green Belt legislation and the piece of legislation called Places to Grow, Growth Plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. Those are the things that laid the groundwork for the process that we're now into. Beginning in about 2007, the city started to go through this process of trying to work out this expansion. There's another way of looking at it. That's in the direction of a provincial government that is becoming much more seriously involved in planning and much more concerned about the fact that in the greater Toronto, Hamilton area, we have the highest levels of congestion of any urban area in North America. We can't keep building our way out of it with more roads and we can't keep sprawling across what little farmland we have left. The province started to lay down some rules. The municipalities, in this, in this case Hamilton, weren't very comfortable with that. They wanted to continue to carry on in the old way. And the old way in Hamilton has always been just keep on expanding the urban boundary, try to keep your city financially viable by more growth, particularly more residential suburban growth. And that process in Hamilton um, was threatened by the uh, provincial government's rule. So if you think about the timing of this thing, the timing is very much at the same time as the provincial government is bringing in its tighter rules. And as a result, that move in 2005 to actually bring it in, even though the province wrote the city a letter and said, don't do this, you need to go through a number of steps before you can just willy-nilly expand your urban boundary, the council proceeded anyway. They got stopped through the Ontario Municipal Board process. There was an appeal launched by a couple of individual citizens against it, and then the provincial government itself, Ministry of Municipal Affairs, appealed it as well came into a settlement agreement in 2006. And that settlement agreement forced the city, if they want to proceed in this direction, to go back and establish why they want to proceed in this direction to justify it. One of the rules that exists in the provincial planning rules is that you can't use agricultural land unless you don't have any other choice. So if you want to actually expand your boundary, you have to prove that you have to expand your boundary. And you have to prove that this is the only logical place to do it. That's the kind of rule structure that the city was faced with. It looks very much like the city tried to get as much land in as possible before the rules got solidly in place. So now we're into a longer process. Now we're into a process that's taken now into 2010 before the city council actually adopted the plan for the Aerotropolis and uh, is now before the Ontario Municipal Board and the decision will end up being made there. This is certainly a field of dreams, but the argument they're using is a technical argument. The argument goes like this. Hamilton is going to grow. The province has done some rough forecasts, and they've decided that the current population of Hamilton, which is about 520,000, will blow up to 660,000 in the next 20 years. Those projections began back in 2001, and we're way behind, and everybody recognizes that we're way behind, so it's highly unlikely that we're going to get anywhere near 660,000 by the end of the planning period 2031. That projected number of 660,000 is what the city is hanging its hat on, and it's saying then, okay, 660,000 people, we're going to have to have more jobs. Some of those jobs are going to have to be on industrial land, so they do a calculation and say we get this many jobs per hectare or per acre on the industrial land, therefore we need this many acres, and and we don't have it. We need a lot more. So let's go out and add a big new business park. And the Aerotropolis is the choice for the big new business park. Now, if you look at the actual rate of consumption on an annual basis, we've got 25 or 30 years supply of greenfield lands at the current rate of absorption of land. We've got 
that much city, that's not counting all the stuff we have on Brownfield. But that isn't the way the calculation is being done. The calculation is being done on the basis of the population will go up and therefore we need more jobs, therefore we need more land for jobs, and we'll just work on the forecast. So we're working on a forecast that really nobody believes in anymore. The most recent census has made clear that Hamilton's population growth is less than 50% of what it was expected to be, and there isn't a particular reason to think that's going to change in a dramatic fashion in the next 10 to 20 years. Part of the reason that the projections were so high is Toronto, when these projections were made, was the economic engine of Canada. And it still is to a substantial extent. But we know that things have changed in the last decade. Ontario is struggling. Much of the growth is heading west uh, around the tar sands and uh, the uh, mining development and so on. The growth expectations for Ontario uh, have not been actually met in the growth over the last decade anywhere in the greater Toronto area. But Hamilton is actually further behind than anybody else. The Aerotropolis idea is that because companies want to move things fast, they'll want to locate beside an airport in order to be able to do that. That trend is actually going in the opposite direction. It's going in the opposite direction because it's getting more and more expensive to fly goods by airplane. And that's because the fuel prices are going up. So that whole direction that Casarda built this on may have made sense, sounded like it made sense a decade ago before we hit essentially peak oil, when we hit the point where we're now no longer have any cheap sources of oil to tap into and we're going into drilling for it two miles under the Gulf of Mexico or we're trying to extract it from uh, the tar sands where it's mixed with sand and it's costing a fortune to get the stuff out. As a result, the price is going up and it's going to continue to go up because the cheap, easy to get at oil is largely gone.